Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out the Cocos Creator Game Engine. Now, I've covered this guy a couple times in the past, so I'm not going to go into a ton of depth on this one. We're going to mostly focus on what is new with Cocos Creator, and that is Cocos Creator 2.4.0. Now, if you've never heard of Cocos Creator, a bit of an overview. It is a completely free game engine. It's not open source, but the underlying engine, Cocos 2DX, is. So the framework that this is built on top of is open source, but the actual editor environment is not. Now, this guy is more heavily used in Asia than it is in North America, and it's really used to make uh, mobile titles uh, and HTML5 style games. If you're trying to make a Facebook instant game or something along those lines, this is a good engine for that. Also, obviously, if you're trying to make a mobile title, that's what Cocos Creator is all about. Your primary languages are JavaScript and TypeScript, and you have a full editing environment. And 2.4 4.0 was just released. Now we're going to get back to the details of 2.4.0, but I'm going to jump into Cocos Creator 2.4.0 first. And this is the full editing environment. If you've never seen it before, it's a very polished, clean editor. I do really appreciate that. Another thing that they've added somewhat recently is this dashboard option. So you can go ahead, uh, you can create projects here and manage your projects. You've also got access to create and new and load editors. You got a news overview and so on. And you have something else to clutter up down here. For example, Substance has one of these, Unity has one of these, Unreal engine has one of these i'm kind of getting sick of these uh, download managers but it seems to be the way of the future so anyways it does have that now that was somewhat recently added and it's how i installed this version it's the only way you can install cocos creator now by the way is by installing and using the dashboard all right so here we are in cocos creator i'm going to show off the kind of the highlight new feature of cocos creator and that is bundles now this isn't something i can really show you visually that well because it's more of a behind the scenes plumbing thing but what it allows you to do is organize aspects of your game into bundles so say, for example, you had level one, level two, level three, level four, and so on. Each one of those could be a bundle. And as you need them, you can load them in. It makes it easier to support instant games, that kind of stuff. And uh, here is one of the examples. This comes from their downloadable examples you can see here. So go ahead, grab the canvas here. We'll notice there is a script attached to it called asset bundle go over here and let's open that guy up so the key thing is in the editor you can organize and create these asset bundles and then you're going to notice the code behind it what we're using heavily here is the asset manager now the asset manager has a number of abilities it can do things like um download those things, automate that process for you, manage the loading and changing and disloading or unloading of uh, bundles in. It handles things like download breaking. So if your connection goes down, that kind of stuff. So it really makes it kind of seamless to work with these bundles remotely, which is a nice thing to definitely add in. All right, so that is uh, from a code side of things, one of the new things that was added in here. Another smaller new feature here is, let me go ahead, I'll just create a new, uh, so let's create a new scene to demo here. All right, so we're in a new scene, canvas here. And what I'm gonna do is drop in a label. So now with the label, you can see over here, you can drop in and you can bring in a two type font. Now the weird thing here is it doesn't work exactly as I would have expected or as it's shown. So there's something I'm missing. Here's a TTF font that I've brought in. So we're just gonna drop that in there. So we go, there is the label. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna change that guy out to my super awesome demo. All right, so there you see the uh, text being created over here. So now what we can do with this new functionality is we can also set it things to bold, which is ugly as hell on that font, italic, or underline. You're also supposed to be able to do shadowing and so on, uh, especially if it's set into char mode. Uh, but frankly, I couldn't actually figure out how, how to do that. So uh, the, the release notes say you can do this. I actually don't see how. But anyways, just a quick interview or an overview of what Cocos Creator itself looks like. As I mentioned earlier on, I've done a ton of coverage on this guy in the past. So if you want to see more about the editor, how the process works, I will have that. I've also done a full tutorial series that shows you how to create a basic game using Cocos Creator. I will have that linked down below. Below. So if you want to check that out, that is available over here, Cocos Creator Crash Course. You can see we cover things like handling input, sound and music, animation, collision detection, physics, tile maps, and there's a full video of that as well. So if you want to see and learn more about Cocos Creator, don't worry, I've already got you covered. And version 3.0 is coming at some point in the future. I will probably do an update at that point in time. So now we go back to 2.4.0, the version that was released today. And what do we got here? Well, we've already covered most of it off in that demo. Again, a lot of it's behind the scenes stuff that's not really that sexy, but we got things like the asset bundling. So you can divide your 
resources into a project into modules according to the wishes of the developer and to divide the resources with different needs in different scenarios into multiple packages. This reduces the time required to download and load a game for the first time and can also be used, uh, also be copied across projects. So you see here they've broken down into chapter one, chapter two, and so on. So then you can use uh, the asset bundles. You can manage like the target platform you're working with, how to compress it, if it is remote or not. And then we've got the asset manager, which can be used for maintaining and managing these bundles. Asset manager does more than that. So as I mentioned earlier on, it does things like supports loading and preloading of all resources. Preloading can run silently in a lighter way without affecting operational efficiency. Supports asset bundles, obviously. Uh, supports a more secure automatic release mechanisms. No need to consider its reference when releasing resources to avoid mistake, uh, mistaken releases of resources. Supports download failure, retry, download priority, download concurrent number, and other settings, which can be adjusted according to various situations. And support for more convenient custom loading processes to achieve special effects. So that's kind of a really nice way you can make your game much more lightweight and modular. Uh, you can also basically create it so you can have extensions and, and expandability later on. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, labels have some new functionality. There is a blending mode. I didn't actually showcase that, but here, let's go select this guy right here. Go over here, select that guy. You got this blending modes available right here like that and destination there as well. So you got various different blending mode options available for labels uh, in here. Also free type. So if you use a TTF file, uh, Android speeds are about five times faster. iOS speeds are about three times faster and they support bold outline shadow and other effects when using TTF and char mode. The weird thing is I can get uh, bold to work. I can get underlined to work. I'm not actually sure where you enable these other effects. So it might just be on me. Uh, support graphic anti-aliasing effects. So using SDF technology to optimize graphics aliasing problems. Uh, so you can see the jitter or the edges around them. And here you see super smoothness. Uh, support the um, support the compressed texture of other small game platforms. Uh, oh, so uh, mini games. So they've got support for WeChat mini games, Oppo mini games, Vivo mini games, etc. Uh, WeChat and Oppo are big in China, not really that prevalent here. Uh, so improved native hot support uh, as well. So creators, uh, Cocos Creator 2.4 further improves the native hot update capabilities and optimize the following: add interface to get update package size, uh, MD5 parameter to the link, more friendly to CDN or content delivery networks, and solve the problem of resource loss and confusion caused by interruption of the update process. Uh, added a safe UI area for uh, Android and iOS devices to support this. So safe area on mobile phones with a special screen. So you can use that control to basically so that uh, I think the one example I can think of is like um, the Samsung Galaxy Edge where you get like kind of the edges of the screen are kind of a no-go zone. Uh, this is a control a UI component to make that easier. And then we've got other newer, smaller features like an upgrade on the TypeScript version, the V8, which is the underlying JavaScript engine. It's been updated and so on. Smaller stuff. I will, of course, link this stuff down below, but we're kind of getting into, you know, fixes and little things as opposed to the bigger, uh, more prevalent issues also got a bit of an upgrade guide on how to move things on and then if you scroll all the way to the bottom this is where you can download the dashboard from and once you've got the dashboard installed you can use this link to download it or you can just go straight into the dashboard which i lost oh it's down here probably in my tray right now and you can add the new version just basically going uh to the editor and you can pick and download a version right here and then you can pick the version you want. For example, I've already installed it, so you can't see. So if I wanted to grab this version, I can just go ahead, grab that one, and do the download link right here. And that is how you can get the most current version. And yeah, that is it. That is Coco's Creator. Uh, so I guess it's 2.4.0. Probably the last... Uh, little release until we start seeing the 3.0 release, which is coming, I believe, later this summer. Uh, that one's going to be uh, a somewhat more substantial release, so do stay tuned for that. But let me know what you think. Have you checked out Coco's Creator? I know one of the things that's kind of going against it is it's directly competing against completely open projects. So this one, just the framework is open and the editor is not. And I know, you know you're kind of at their mercy for adding the features you need, and I know that's definitely a turnoff to some people, but it is a very polished engine, and if you haven't found what you're looking for, especially if you want to work in in JavaScript or TypeScript first, and you're supporting uh, mobile or web game application development, uh, Cocos Creator is definitely one to consider checking out. All right, let me know what you think, and talk to you all later. Goodbye.